Alright, uh, hi. I am Mr. Mewtoad. Yeah, um, awesome. And, um, I'm just going to say that I'm going to make some YouTube videos. You know, like, I'll, I'll do Minecraft, some Clash of Clans, I'll do some Airsoft, and that's about it, basically. And, uh, um, I'm just going to do this YouTube series, so, yeah. The day is October 13th, 2013. I remember rushing home from elementary school. I had this incredible idea. So these videos are going to be about 12 minutes apiece. It was all I could think about, all I could talk about, all my friends were in on it. I was going to be a YouTuber. I am Mr. Mewtoad. Now, you all have heard this story before. We post a couple videos as kids, embarrass ourselves on the internet, and move on. This is exactly what I did after a few cringy Minecraft videos and neighborhood skits. But the reason I bring these terrible videos up isn't because this is going to be some grand story of how my YouTube career started over 10 years ago. It's to show you that we all have one thing in common, a profound love for YouTube. YouTube has been such a massive part of my life, watching me grow up and change. The voices of PewDiePie, Captain Sparkles, and Etho took up my summer afternoons and have been with me for so long. Chances are, you also have creators that you grew up with. And that's the beauty of YouTube, the ability to create and foster communities. Throughout my entire life, there's always been a community making me feel like I have had a purpose in the crazy world of ours. So. Here we are, 10 years later, with 10,000 subscribers and growing. It feels good. I'm proud of what I have accomplished and the hundreds of hours I've put into this channel. It is my passion and my life force. I want to thank everyone close to me for their unconditional support, giving me the confidence and drive to post my work. I thought about doing this for a while, but was too afraid to listen to my voice, literally and metaphorically. You all were the reason I found it. Thank you. But this wouldn't be possible without a community to share my voice with as well. You all are the reason this video exists. The reason we have explored artists, games, and ideas. Every single one of you, listening to my voice through speakers and taking time out of your day to celebrate this. You all are the reason I can't stop smiling every day. I'm not sure how you could thank someone for making 10 years of a dream come true, but thank you. I had no idea back then that I would one day be creating my own community, but I certainly had the dream. I want you all to know that this is always going to be a space to escape the crazy world we live in. YouTube has always been and continues to be that escape for me. I believe that feeling should persist into this channel and this community. So with that said, I have some very exciting announcements to make. There is now an official Fort Collins Productions Discord server. It is brand new, hot off the press, and waiting for members as we speak. A link to join is in the description where hopefully our community can flourish even more. Special events, sneak peeks, and more will all be found here, and I can't wait to see what this becomes. I hope for this to be an ever-evolving space so suggestions and ideas are always welcome to make the server better. Everybody's voice matters. It would be awesome to have game nights, fake presentation nights, and more in the future. And to celebrate this launch, I am planning on hosting a movie night in the near future on the server. So go check it out if you're interested. All right, with all that said, now let us dive into your thought-provoking questions that I'm like a couple months late answering. And also, I'm not really at 10k anymore, but that's okay. I was busy, you know, it's a... Let's just get to the questions. Why is that your profile picture? To be honest, this photo wasn't chosen for some metaphorical reason or anything complex, but it was taken during a time of my life where I felt quite lost in my overall purpose. Photography was my escape from that, and this photo was one of my favorites that I ever took. I think I'm gonna go steal that sign someday. What's really funny about it is that when I first decided to post onto YouTube, the profile picture was kinda just 
I don't know, a place marker for until I eventually made something better. And it ended up morphing into this thing where I actually liked it more than anything else I would create. And the sign serves as a nice symbol for the channel. And it reminds me a lot of home. So it worked out pretty nicely. I think in general, um, it was very unexpected to be using it for a channel that exploded out of nowhere that I definitely did not see coming at all, but still pretty cool. What has been a moment that has been most meaningful to you? Not really asking about numbers here. I'm asking about like a moment in making it watching your videos that really connected you with your craft. It's difficult to name an exact moment over this crazy journey where things just suddenly clicked. But I think one moment in the process that always resonates with me is creating the title sequence for the video. From the first video I made about Green Day, my favorite part about these videos is editing a bizarre and stylistic title sequence. I think when I see those words, Fort Collins Productions Presents, on my editing screen, it just reminds me how much I love doing this. And I think what makes this more impactful is then visiting my videos later. I revisit my Worms on Concrete video all the time because I love the intro to that video so much. Even if the video was definitely flawed. Why did you name your channel Fort Collins Productions? I named my channel Fort Collins Productions back in 2021. Originally, the channel was going to serve as a host for a mockumentary me and my friends were making. For it, I wanted to create a fake production studio that would play during the title sequence of said mockumentary. Later on, I would use the channel to publish some family travel videos and little projects of mine here and there, really when I was learning the basics of video editing and, I don't know, having little keepsakes. When I made the Green Day video, it was originally just a fun thing for friends and family. In fact, I had a lot of people in my life that were wondering a little bit why I was so obsessed with Green Day, and I decided to put that into a video to show them why they should really care about Green Day more and why I love them so much. What I didn't expect is that it blew up out of nowhere. It was the first video essay I ever actually posted. I decided maybe I should keep writing video essays since I always loved watching them so much and had this drive to write my own. And here we are with a bizarre name from an abandoned project and a completely new identity. If you had told me back then that this would be what the channel was three years later, I never would have believed you. Any merch ideas for the channel? Maybe. They're in process right now. I've been working with some really talented artist friends of mine, uh, getting them created. I have no idea when it'll be ready, but it will be coming in the future. Do know that. If YouTube doesn't work out long term, what would your ideal job be? Well, as some of you know, I'm actually in college right now. I'm currently getting two degrees. Um, one is in general psych and the other is in trumpet performance. So I'm getting these degrees to eventually become a therapist and a freelance musician at the same time. It would be pretty cool to combine the two and provide therapy services towards musicians specifically, kind of like sports psychologists. There's a lot we have to go through in music school especially that much of the world doesn't really know about. Who knows, maybe that's a video for someday. Which of your videos is your favorite and which of them was the most difficult to make? Also, I'm a huge fan, congrats on 10k. Thank you so much! It is difficult to choose a favorite since it seems to change with me every other day, which I guess is a good thing. The video I am most proud of right now is Hawaii Part 2. That was some of the craziest research and editing I have ever done for a video. I still want to revisit that style but with a new topic because I believe the worlds of analog and video essays are just waiting to be explored. But to answer the question, right now I think my favorite essay is Worms on Concrete. I wrote and edited that entire essay in one day, and although there's a massive audio annoyance in it, I think the thesis of the paper was really good and stylized well. I'm incredibly nostalgic for that day when I made it, and it was the last essay I made before my channel really exploded in popularity. To answer the second part of the question, the most difficult essay was by far the Mahler essay. The copyright world surrounding orchestral music is so utterly ridiculous, I had to re-edit that video about four times to finally get it through. But 
I still really enjoyed the process, and some close friends say it was their favorite one. I'm gonna go listen to Mahler's Third Symphony now. What is your favorite part about the video creation process? Besides the title sequence, I love creating the identity of an essay. When it's just words on a screen, an essay is missing a fundamental piece that video provides so well. It is crazy how much I can change the mood and tone of an essay just by music choice and editing style. It really makes it feel like my thoughts and passions are coming to life in front of me. It's a really cool feeling. What is your ultimate goal with YouTube? What do you plan on doing for a living? How did it feel to get that first rush of substantial viewership? I don't necessarily have one ultimate goal with YouTube other than to continue enjoying and creating content. At the end of the day, if a video impacts only one person, that is a successful video to me, and that's including myself. Would 1 million subscribers be cool? Absolutely, and it's certainly something to target. But even if I only had one subscriber, it would still be worth it to me. For a living, I answer my ideas if YouTube doesn't work out, but if it does, I think this YouTube thing could be a real sense of purpose for me in life. It allows me to express myself creatively in a way I haven't been able to in a very long time, and it's such a huge piece of my personality. Although I can never do just one thing. I still want to flourish my music career, and therapy still sounds really interesting. At this point, I'm just trying to do whatever makes me happy and keeps me alive. When I first got that rush of substantial viewership, I definitely felt like I had found one of my purposes in life. It was cool to see so many other people had the same passions and interests as me, and connections to an album that was so bizarre. It certainly felt like a life-changing moment when I saw so many people brought together. It was really, really cool. Let me say, with that first rush of substantial viewership, or just in general, because it happens, you know, off and on right now with the, uh, where the channel is at, I think a big part of it is trying to separate my own emotional connection to numbers, you know, because if you do that, you end up kind of getting really disappointed, because YouTube, the algorithm works in very mysterious ways, and nobody really knows how it works exactly. And so, when you get too attached to these numbers, it really can decide your mood for the day. I've had to work very, very hard, and I'm still working on it, to separate the two. It's very difficult. Usually these days, when a video is starting to do well, I actually try and find things to distract myself so I'm not just constantly refreshing over and over. Um, the Minecraft video that just posted um, about the universe, that uh, video was doing really, really well on the first day and I had to find things to keep my mind off of it because literally like I would just sit there on my phone, refresh, refresh, look at all these people watching, like it's a cool feeling but also at the same time I don't want it to be everything, you know? That was a little bit of a ramble, you get the idea though. How did you settle on an editing style? It really has been something developing since I first started with that mockumentary that I was talking about. I think it is extremely influenced by Casey Neistat, Jacob Geller, and the film Baby Driver, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen it. The sharp transitions, cuts on beat with the music, and overall storytelling aspect can definitely be found from these creators. But it also depends so much on the video, I take a lot of inspiration from said niches and little fields of YouTube. For instance, with that Minecraft video, a lot of those B-roll like slow shader shots were inspired by creators like Flow State, which also is a great creator, you should check them out. Um, when I edited family travel videos, when the channel like kind of first started, they would work in the same way, and it crossed over to video essay land actually pretty well. I honestly didn't plan for any of that to happen, it kind of just naturally developed over time. Then as new ideas popped into my brain, I wanted to try and reach into new realms I wasn't as comfortable with, like analog horror, or slower pacing styles like the Minecraft video, or Claire de Lune. Would you do YouTube full time if that was possible? Absolutely. It has been a passion of mine for a long time now that got suppressed because I didn't really think I was capable, nor did I think it was really possible. I definitely feel the opposite way now. What type of videos are you most likely going to make in the future? Video essays and more video essays. 
I have a massive list of future projects and ideas, ranging from murders to Spongebob. I'm trying to focus more and more on music, and trying to find a specific niche with video essays about music, but I really enjoy making video essays about other things too. For instance, A Glimpse at Spectacle was a ton of fun to make, and that had really nothing to do with music. Same with Fear of Forests. For whatever reason, YouTube has this pit where nobody talks much about music in typical video essay format, at least like, kinda in the way that I do it. It is always either full theory analysis, or maybe having a little section of the video dedicated to music. It's kinda weird. To be honest, I can't really decide, and I don't really want the channel to just fall into one specific niche, I kinda want it to flow and to do different things. That means that it'll be a little bit difficult growing on YouTube and I won't get a super consistent audience at first, but it kinda creates this cult following and more of a sense of community eventually, and that's kinda what I wanna do. I mean, having a YouTube channel like Jacob Geller for instance who covers a bunch of different things, that's always so much fun to me because I learn so much. Emplement is another great example. Is there any larger YouTubers in particular you think it would be cool to collaborate with? There are tons, honestly. I love the work that Jacob Geller does, and he would definitely be my first choice. Working with Emplemon, Nexpo, or Let Me Know would be awesome too. Funny enough, I am also massively into Minecraft YouTube, still, and have always dreamed about working with the people on the Hermitcraft server. Beyond Minecraft, there are creators that always inspire me. Mumbo Jumbo's personal film channel is absolutely incredible, and the Imp and Skiz podcast has taught me so much about how to share your passions with the world. To work with any of them would be an incredible learning experience and also make little kid me so happy. What has got you hooked on doing video essays in the first place? Jacob Geller's video, The Quiet Sadness of Super Mario Galaxy, is one of the first video essays I ever watched. Ever since then, I have been obsessed with them and their emotional impact. It is such a cool way to teach people about the world and share your ideas. Like the Let Me Know video about Cicada 3301 is one of the best pieces of media I have ever seen. That felt like a major golden age for YouTube video essays, and it really hooked me into the genre. At the end of the day, I have always wanted to tell stories, and I get a lot of fun out of it. I took a public speaking class in college and loved it way more than I thought, and that actually helped influence a lot of what I do in writing my video essays and wanting to make them, is that I just have this knack for it that I didn't really expect to have. There's just nothing better than a good video essay, man. Nothing better. What is some advice you would have for people interested in making their own video essays? I have ideas for things I'd like to try and talk about sometimes, but I just don't know how to start. Oh man, I love this question. Thank you for asking it. With this video playing still, go open a document in Word or Docs, or even a note tab on your phone. No, seriously, go do it. You can pause the video if you need to. Now, literally write a sentence for something you want to talk about, something that you love to your core and wish more people knew about. And after you write your topic idea, just leave it for a bit. The most difficult part for me to start writing video essays was how I kept creating obstacles that kept me from even signing up for the race. It was thoughts like, oh, I don't like the sound of my voice, and nobody would want to hear what I have to say about this, and writing is a lot of work, and I don't have time for it. It is so much easier creating these obstacles than just pushing through them. It is a natural human thing to do, and I promise you, you aren't the only one with these thoughts. I do it all the time. But, most of the time in actuality, these obstacles are tiny. If it is something you really want to do, there is nothing holding you back. There are no standards you have to meet except your own. If you have pressure about writing for an audience, Try and think of it like you're writing a speech for your best friend on why they should love something that you love. That's what I did with the Green Day video and look what happened. You is half the title of this website. Don't ever forget how important that is. And if you are really worried about it, email me a copy so I can tell you how fantastic it is. You got this, dude. Now go create it. In the description, there's a link to a podcast episode that really helped me motivate myself in the content creation sphere. Check it out if you're interested. 
All right, on to the personal questions. What are your favorite pieces of media that you consumed last year? Man, there is just so much to choose from. 2023 was an absolute banger year for everything. For movies, I was a massive fan of Across the Spider-Verse and Oppenheimer in terms of new releases, and Barbie of course too. I also finished arguably my favorite show ever, Better Call Saul. Music was also incredible, where I dove head over heels into Hawaii Part 2, Noah Kahn's library, and so much more. Not to mention the incredible games I played in 2023 too. Sons of the Forest and Lethal Company gave me so many iconic moments with friends. On a scale of... You should go in there. Okay. It's very safe. HOLY SHIT! And although it didn't come out in 2023, The Outer Wilds has turned into one of my favorite single player games. It is so much fun. How do you discover new music? There are really two main avenues for me discovering new music. One of them is the YouTube algorithm taking me to strange places. The other is recommendations. It isn't anything special, but these two routes were how I stumbled across some of my favorite pieces of music ever. It also shows me so many different sides in the music world I never even thought of. When someone recommends you to listen to something, actually try and listen to it. Keeping an open mind for music is how I found myself falling in love with it so much. On a scale of 1 to 1000, Landmanuel Miranda, smash or pass. Is this even a question? It isn't going to be quiet uptown, that's all I'm saying. What is your favorite movie? Interstellar. There are too many phenomenal things about that movie. Everything about it is so beautiful, from the cinematography to the dialogue to the music itself. I have never consumed a piece of media with such scale and sense of humanity. One of my biggest wishes is to see it in the theater, as I was a little too young to really get it at the time it came out. Lucky for me, it's supposed to be re-released this year in theaters, so I'm really excited for that. Oh man, it is just such a good movie though, I could talk about it for so long. I mean, I just want to know. What are your favorite soundtracks from video games? Because I just love all the Xenoblade soundtracks. Um, there are a lot that I really enjoy. Halo, Red Dead Redemption 2, Outer Wilds, Life is Strange, to name a few. Honestly, this list goes on forever. I've already made two videos discussing the incredible beauty I find with Minecraft soundtrack. I definitely think that Life is Strange has one of the most underrated soundtracks in video games. So if I could recommend one, it would be that. I'm gonna go check out Xenoblade now though. Sounds interesting. What do you want for your birthday? Puppy. Next question. Favorite style of Crocs? Minecraft Crocs by far. I don't own a pair, but when I saw them in store, I just had to stare at them for only a couple hours. The giblets on them? So fire. Have you ever thought about or attempted music creation of your own? Are you planning on it in the future? Also, have you listened to Will Wood? I recommend him. I have. I am currently in college studying music and performing trumpet, so that is where I get a lot of my classical slash jazz side from that for sure. I also picked up guitar over COVID as a hobby and started to write my own songs. I'll put a clip of me covering Oh My Sweet Carolina by Ryan Adams from a couple years back. I want to get back into writing songs, just haven't made the time for it as I found stronger passion for other things. Also, I'll check out Will Wood. Lil Baby or Da Baby? Da Baby Car. Any restaurants, coffee shops, etc. in the Fort Collins area you want to shout out or recommend? Oh man, I'll be basic for this, but Alley Cat is always a must for that classic cafe vibe. I also really like Lima and Mugs as well. Mugs in Old Town is such a nice place to hang out with friends on their patio. If you're willing to drive, Inkwell and Brew up in Estes Park is by far the best coffee shop I've ever been to in terms of aesthetic. They have these beautiful windows where you can see the mountains and it's so cozy and this amazing Hemingway quote like painted on the ceiling, it's super cool. What's some of your favorite songs slash albums slash artists recently? Would love to hear more about your music taste. 
Recently, I would say Noah Kahn's Cape Elizabeth, Beyonce's Cowboy Carter, Zach Brown Band's You Get What You Give, and Childish Gambino's Because the Internet albums have been some of my top listens lately. Um, not gonna lie though, it literally changes every day. I try my best to listen to just about everything, not only from a YouTube standpoint and discovering new possible content, but also catching up on sides of entertainment I'm forgetting about. Like Beyonce? I barely ever listen to her, but this new album is so fantastic. In general, my top genres are usually folk slash country, punk rock, hip hop, and classical. As you can tell though, I listen to kinda every hemisphere of music, so I'm always open to recommendations. And on that Discord server, there's actually a channel for said music recommendations. I would love more. How do you feel about Brazilian music? MPB, Samba, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Pagode? Brazilian rock, bossa nova, and the like. I have a decent amount of experience playing in bossa nova style with trumpet and jazz, but other than that I have not listened to it much. Girl from Ipanema is one of my personal favorite jazz pieces though, especially when it is in Portuguese. I really liked what Frank Sinatra did with it, and his cover was what introduced me to it in the first place. Brazilian rock sounds interesting, I'm listening to it right now while typing this, it is not what I was expecting. It seems to be a lot more chill than American rock music. I kinda like it. What is your musical timeline? What did your parents listen to? What do you listen to as you were growing up? I grew up listening to a lot of 90s music. Green Day, Weezer, Dave Matthews Band, Garth Brooks, just to name a few. The first time I really started to reach out beyond what they were listening to was listening through Imagine Dragons Night Visions album. I still have so much nostalgia for it to this day. I was in this weird EDM slash rock slash country vibe for a while. It wasn't really until college when I really started to branch out more, listening to folk music, hip hop, classical, and just about everything else. What is one of your least favorite pieces of music? I don't have very many, but I am really not a fan of recent Maroon 5 in general. Their last decent album, V, was subpar, and they legit peaked with their debut album and songs about Jane. Their song Memories makes me want to break things, especially considering it sounds like a terrible take on Pachelbel's canon for the entirety of its melodic structure. Of all the people, to try and quote wedding music, fucking Adam Levine? Who are your favorite YouTubers? My YouTube taste is almost as uncoordinated as my music taste. The two main genres I watch are Minecraft videos and video essays, so we'll go with those two. I've been watching Hermitcraft for a very long time now and truly love all of them so much. Etho has got to be my favorite especially because I've been watching his content since I was like 10. I also love watching Mumbo, Grian, and B-dubs as well. For video essays though, the big three for me are Jacob Geller, Emp Lemon, and Lemmy Me Know. They have inspired my content so much, and the way that they craft their writing and videos is just incredible. Also, honorable mention would be Brandon Perna and Tom Grassi for giving me plenty of football content and laughs. All right, on to future ideas. Do you plan on bringing back the What I Am Listening To This Week series? I'm back and forth on it. I think I might revamp the idea into something that isn't quite as short, just because I do not vibe with editing short form content. I want to tell stories and not just give you an opinion in 60 seconds or less. As you can tell from the length of this video, I am quite bad at doing that. Besides that though, I really do want to share miniature breakdowns of what I'm listening to. A good number of people seem to enjoy them, I think I might get back into it over some capacity in the summer. I guess we'll see. And the other thing too is that YouTube shorts are dumb and are kind of killing YouTube. This is someone I'll be testing my wrist to. Okay, let's go ahead and knock on the door. Bessie McBoo, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sweetie. Matt Pat made a really, really good video about it not too long ago. I highly recommend it. I'll put it in the description if I remember. Since you have already talked about Miracle Musical, are you going to do a video about Tally Hall or their side projects? Ignoring Hawaii Part 2, obviously. I have a feeling I will, just not sure when. Their story goes so deep and it is a lot of fun diving into it, 
but I don't necessarily want my channel to be oriented around them either. Their music is such a breath of fresh air though, so that may entice me to go back just for that reason alone. I'm really glad so many people enjoy them though, it's really really cool how much of a cult following they have. Do you plan on doing more music or album breakdowns like that of Hawaii Part 2? I do. I have a number of projects in the works similar to the idea of Hawaii Part 2, some darker than others. In general though, it is finding a deep enough rabbit hole that it would make a great video that is the hard part. Some musical mysteries are just talked about way too much or have little to offer besides the musician went missing. Ooh. I have something coming out in the works though that I think is really going to knock your socks off. It's wild. It has taken a lot of work though, so I have no idea when it'll be out. Are you going to do theories or go into depth about shows or anything? Thought about it. I'm sure I will. It is just finding the right show to discuss. I have a couple shows written down that might be fun, so it is certainly something that I am thinking about. Theories wise, I have no idea. Sometimes theories kind of pop up in my head. Um, Hawaii Part 2 is a great example of that, or the Lethal Company video talking about the game and its orientation around childhood. It really just depends. Um, kind of depends on the topic. Most of the time I don't really seek out having a set theory until it kind of reveals itself to me in research. Will you do a video about Kendrick Lamar's discography and the story he conveys in his albums? Amazing suggestion, and I have no idea. I listen to Lamar, but haven't listened to his albums in any sort of order yet. I absolutely need to though, because from what I've heard, he's done some incredible things with his music. So to answer your question, maybe? I might cover the whole Drake, Kendrick Lamar thing that's going on right now eventually, because it's really, really funny, but we'll see. When are you going to do an analysis of a Gregory Allen Isakov album? First off, love Greg. His music is so unique in the folk music world, and his vulnerable sound is iconic. I need to keep diving into his sound and constructing a story, but he offers a lot of potential. I'll keep you posted. What is your take on the entirety of Childish Gambino's Because of the Internet? P.S. What is the meaning behind Roscoe's wetsuit? Good timing. I love this album so much. The way it covers every nuance of internet culture, and it did it over a decade ago, is insane to me. Childish Gambino is just so freaking good. My personal favorite song off the album is World Star. It just is so raw and real and I, I love it. Also, I'm pretty sure Roscoe's wetsuit means nothing to show how the internet will make up theories for just about anything, which is the most childish thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I know, that pun was pretty bad. Holy moly! We made it, guys! This seriously would not have been possible without each and every single one of you. The fact that 10k, <clears throat> 11k people have subscribed is amazing, and you are making my childhood dream come true. What we have created here is something special, and I want to cherish this community the best that I can. Starting a Discord server is a good first step, and offering a space where we can collaborate beyond the realm of YouTube. All of you take time out of your day to watch me discuss something I am passionate about. I want to hear yours. Not just in the comment section, but in a true community space. So go join if you haven't yet, and be kind to each other. I appreciate your time, and here's to the next milestone, whatever it may be. See you soon, friends. And also a huge shout out to my friends who helped me edit this video. You guys are real ones. Thank you so much. I went down to Houston and I stopped in San Antonio. And I passed up the station for the bus. And I was trying to find me something. But I wasn't sure just what And I ended up with pockets full of dust And I went down to Cleveland That's where I went insane I bought a borrowed suit and learned to dance And I 
I was spending money like the way it likes to rain. Man, I ended up with pockets full of cane. Oh, my sweet Carolina, what compels me to go? Oh, my sweet disposition. Vegas, but I gambled all my life. Though the newsprint boats are racing to a main, and I was trying to find me something, but I wasn't sure just what. It's funny how they say some things never change. Oh, my sweet Carolina. compels me to go Oh my sweet disposition May you one day carry me home Out here in the city Seems like things are closing in The sunset's just my light bulb burning out And I miss Kentucky And I miss my family And all the sweetest winds that blow across the south Oh my sweet Carolina What compels me to go? Oh, my sweet disposition.